Nina and in this video I will show you how to create your own sample library. If you want to develop your skills to be faster, more efficient and more creative, then please watch this video and see how creating your own sample library can help you to become an ultimate pro producer. <laughs> Hi, 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 and welcome to Elena Does Audio Stuff. So in today's episode, as I said, we're gonna be doing our own sample library. This is actually something I have wanted to do for myself for a long time, just to have a day of creating samples. Now I have a good excuse of doing it because I wanna make a video about it. Why would you wanna create your own sample library? Because you might already have sample libraries in Ableton Live or Logic. You will become faster because you don't need to go through hundreds of samples that you don't know that you will like. So you can go directly to the sample that you like and you know that it will, it will please you and your style and the genre that you like. Creating your own samples can add a dynamic individual flavor to your song. So creating your own samples, people are more likely to listen to your songs because they're more dynamic and more interesting. There's more things happening. Just to let you know, this is episode three of part of six episode series on how to become a music producer. The first one was about setting up your music studio. Second one was about choosing a door and the differences between Pro Tools Logic and Ableton Live. The next three episodes are gonna be about recording and microphone recommendations, advanced music production techniques and finishing your track. So if you do wanna watch all those, please subscribe in this point. Subscribe. <laughs> Or is it this way or that way? Click the subscription button and also hit the bell icon because then you will be notified when I do post these and I post every Sunday. Okay, let's get into this video and let's create a sample library. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is record our sample library. So I'm gonna be showing you what I'm gonna record, how I'm gonna record, how I'm gonna finalize and arrange everything. I would also like to remind you that in this point, make a note of every sample that you do, the tempo, the BPM, as well as the scale of the sample. That will help you to actually create the library so that it will be... <laughs> you will actually find stuff and you, it will work efficiently. We're gonna first do vocals, then we're gonna do external instruments and then we're gonna do contact microphones and then we're gonna do some drum bits in DAW. So when you're doing vocal recording for samples, you can use any type of microphone if you wanna use condenser microphone or dynamic microphone. I will be explaining the differences and the purposes of these microphones in the next video next week. So yeah, come back if you want to hear more about those next week. So but for this one, I will be using a condensed microphone just for the reason that I want to have as big frequency range as possible and as detailed and clear sound as possible. For the style of music, what I want to do is that I want to have some couple hooky bits, some stuff that I can use for layering. Na, 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 ha, ha. Um, like little yells like hey <laughs> this type of stuff that are really awkward to do hey <laughs> hey also want to have some oohs and ahs for different type of layering Samples, what I can do is I can create interesting textures that bring fullness and depth into the mix. It's really important that when you're creating these clips, you will be singing them in different scales and different tempos. To be able to do that, you can listen to the click as well as uh, play a chord in your keyboard or wherever you like, and then you will sing in that pitch. the clip just make sure that you have written down the tempo and the pitch of the clip. In the end of this video I will show you how you can export all these files into a folder on your computer. Next thing what I will do is that I will record external instruments to create interesting boogie bits, chord progressions, pad sounds, as well as bass and drum sounds. I will create samples with PO137, Park Volga Sample, Arturia Microprit, Xylophone, as well as guitar and ukulele and bass and violin on any other instruments that I really have in here and I have 
quite many. So when you're recording these clips, what you can do is create couple bars sample. So example, if it's a chord progression, you might want to have still like four bars or something. But I would leave it to that. I think four bars is quite long anyway. So it's not a full track, it's just a sample of couple bars, couple seconds. Which then you can uh, manipulate and loop and use it as a base for your production. Next thing what I want to use is concept microphone. <laughs> this one I made it by myself and I have a video of me making it somewhere here. So if you are interested in making a concept microphone by yourself, you can do that, but otherwise they do cost just literally under pound probably from internet. So yeah, they're really cheap as well, but it's fun making stuff. So concept microphones are absolutely amazing of making more experimental, interesting, fascinating sounds that you might not get from anywhere else. What I could just do is attach this to the surface of any material and then I will record through that. I would just go around your house, find interesting stuff that make interesting sounds and then create samples using contact microphone. I found these samples quite interesting and usually the most dynamic ones because they are really random stuff. You do find like the element of surprise and something completely unique for you and definitely nobody else will have that sound in their library or in their songs. Oh, <laughs> I broke it! My uh, good quality soldering has paid off! Damn it. So next thing I want to create really is drums for my doll. So I want to create templates for rhythms. Rhythms that I like, genre that I like, it with the sounds that I like. So in this one, I would already use the samples in the sample library from Ableton Live to create these. So what I will do is just create a MIDI channel with the drum rack on it and drop some cool samples on it. I will keep it really simple in this point. So I will use maybe kick and snare just to create a template of a rhythm. So usually different genres do have a certain type of groove automatically. So with this one, you can then customize it for every song the way that you want. And I would recommend doing several different ones in different genres, in different tempos, with the different type of kit. And then w when you start creating songs, you can just go through, oh, this rhythm is quite cool, this rhythm is quite cool. That's how you can become faster and more efficient when you create samples so you don't get stuck with the groove. If you don't know how to do this and how to create rhythms, please watch my video that I've created previously. I link it up here. I show you how to create grooves and how to create rhythm when you're not a drummer. Personally, groove is something that I really, really need a lot when I start creating a song, usually groove is the thing that kind of gets me going with everything else so I would like to have a collection of maybe even like 10 to 15 different type of grooves in different tempos with the different type of kits. This technique is especially really good for you if you are interested of popular music that uses drum kits that are really simple. So there's never really a full drum kit going. There might be just kick and a snare and then a lot of percussionist sounds, which is mostly popular music nowadays or pop music nowadays. So if you are interested in that type of techniques, type of genres, dance music, EDM, then this might might be really good technique for you to kind of get started with. Okay, so let's get exporting the file. So I have recorded everything to the arrangement view on, in Ableton Live. Firstly, what you should do is just solo the track where you created the samples that you want to export. After that, you will make sure that the session is in the tempo of the sample so that you are actually exporting the sample in the correct BPM, BPM, beats per minute. After that, you just highlight the area that you want to uh, export. After that, you go to File, Export Audio Video, just select Create a PCM and select WAV file or AIFF, 16 or 24 bits, and no dither, 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 dither at all. And save it to a folder that will become your sample library. Okay, so in this point, make sure that you name the samples correctly. So example, in your computer, just create a folder that is called Lina Samples or whatever your name is, Samples. 
in that folder you create different subfolders. So example, bass, drums, synth, percussion, random stuff. In these folders, now it's easier for you to then save all these samples one by one. Maybe in this point also create names that are more interesting. Deep, bassy beat, or I don't know, high, high pitch beat. So then when you're actually going back to these beats, so you will know, oh, that was the beat that I really like that has uh, these kind of features on it. If you do want to export everything on the same go, you can do that by selecting on the top, render it tracks and all separate. So you can do that, but I wouldn't do that because if everything is in a different tempo, if everything is in a different length, you kind of want to go them step by step and also the fact that you can rename them correctly and save them so that you know what, where they are and what they do. Yeah, isn't that clever? <laughs> so now, whatever DAW you use, now you can add your own sample folder into your DAW. So example in Ableton Live, where you add it is you go to the browser area and on the bottom of the area you see a folder, add file, add folder. <laughs> and from there you just click that and you search for the folder that you want to add. Now every time you go to the, uh, your computer on your DAW, you can just access your samples through the browser window and just drag and drop them into the session and voila here we go you have a sample library created and so do I because I really wanted to make one and now had a good excuse to do that hope you enjoyed this video please let me know down in the comments what you thought and if there's any other questions you do have also follow me on social media so that you will be updated on everything I do because there will be a lot of things happening this year subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next week when we're gonna be learning about, what was it? Oh, recording and microphone recommendations. So I'll see you there. Okie dokie, yes, great, bye. <laughs>